हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज अ शॉर्टिश वीडियो ऑन प्रैक्टिकल हिमेटोलॉजी सम टाइम बैक आई हैड आस्ट वन एम सी क्यू अबाउट द पेरिफेरल ब्लड स्मीयर विच सेल इज प्रिडोमिनेंटली फाउंड इन द टेल रीजन और ऑन द एजेस ऑफ ए पेरिफेरल ब्लड स्मीयर एंड द आंसर वॉज द पॉलीमोर्फो न्यूक्लियर न्यूट्रोफिल्स and the monocytes are predominantly found in these regions the tail region and the margins or edges of a peripheral blood smear so let's try to find out uh, what are the ideal properties of a peripheral smear how it is made and then the relevant issues so let's see uh, how we make a peripheral blood smear we take a drop of blood on a slide in fact we make three such slides so that we can take a uh, ideal one or a better one then take a spreader slide hold it in front just in front of the blood drop so that the drop spreads along the edge of that slide and then once it spreads then move the spreader slide forward in one single smooth action mind you the slide should be properly cleaned before you start making the smear because otherwise you will see the you are likely to see the patches in between so that's how a peripheral smear is made now uh, what are the properties of an ideal smear let's uh, try to understand what is an ideal peripheral smear okay about the thickness ideally the peripheral smear should be single cell thick single cell thickness it means it should be neither too thick nor too thin it should cover at least two thirds of the slide the smear should cover at least that much portion of the slide and it should be uniform uh, there should not be some patches in between so uh, that's uh, the these are the properties of peripheral smear let's see which cells are likely to be found in which regions of a smear this is a diagrammatic representation of the of of a peripheral smear it has three regions the head region where the drop was taken and then from where you spread that drop then the body portion in the middle and the tail portion so uh in the tail region and in the on the margins or edges of the slide we would mainly find a uh, polymorpho nuclear neutrophils and the monocytes now uh, just uh, an addition polymorpho nuclear this term is generally not used in the first year medical level so i just want to explain it poly is many morpho is morphology as an appearance and nuclear so a neutri uh, neutrophil you know there are there can be 1 to 5 numbers of lobes in a neutrophil it, uh, a neutrophil can have just one lobe in the nucleus or two lobes three lobes four lobes five lobes so these are different morphologies of a nucleus and therefore polymorpho nuclear neutrophil right so uh, neutrophil and monocyte uh, mainly predominantly in the tail region then body region uh, mainly the lymphocytes and uh, i'm saying predominantly these cells are found in those particular regions the remaining cells uh, toward the head region the next question is why is it so why do you see such a uneven distribution or non uniform distribution of cells now remember the answer there are differences in size shape stickiness and specific gravity four s's to be remember size shape stickiness and specific gravity differs from cell to cell and therefore uh, we find such a uneven distribution of cells along the peripheral blood smear again just uh, for the sake of remembering you can remember it like this toward the tail region uh, we find neutrophils and monocyte predominantly so the largest cells you know monocyte uh, 
18 to 20 microns diameter, neutrophil 14 to 18 micron diameter. So larger cells toward the tail region and along the margins. Then uh, body portion, uh, lymphocytes, yes, uh, about uh, 10 microns diameter. And then uh, smaller than that is only the RBC, which is uh, 7 to 8 micron diameter more in the head region. That's how you can remember. So this is the distribution of various uh, WBCs or various cells on a peripheral blood smear. Now, uh, just one more point I, uh, needs to be highlighted here. WBCs are mainly found near the edges. Majority of the WBCs are found near the edges and periphery of uh, any blood drop. Why is that? Uh, if you have uh, observed a Nubar's chamber under the microscope, you will find that RBC square is at the center and WBC squares are at the periphery on the four corners of that uh, chamber. Can you recall that? RBC square in the center and WBC squares on the four corners or toward the periphery of that chamber. Why is that? Is there any uh, particular reason, reason of aesthetics or what? Okay. Uh, I believe that the reason is motility of the cells. You know, WBCs are motile cells and RBCs are non-motile cells. And therefore, because WBCs are motile cells, they move uh, on their own. So, they tend to move towards the peripheral parts of a smear or to the peripheral parts of a blood drop taken uh, outside the body. And therefore, uh, you know, RBCs generally concentrate towards the center, although this is not a very fixed rule that you find only the RBCs at the center, but generally preponderance, predominantly WBCs at the periphery and RBCs near the central region. In this case, RBCs will be more in the head and then they will be also found throughout the peripheral smear. So that could be the reason. You know, uh, WBCs inside the body, they have been uh, known to come out of the blood vessel and that movement is called as diapedesis. Diapedesis. You will read this during inflammation. I found one more term which is called as epidiasis. Epidiasis has been said to be the movement of WBCs outside the body. When, they, when, when the blood is outside the body and the WBCs move by themselves, that movement has been described as epidiasis. Although, honestly, I did not fi find uh, many authors mentioning this particular aspect. But then, remember that the WBCs are motile cells. This could be the additional reason why they are found particularly in uh, specific regions in a drop of blood or in a, in a uh, peripheral smear. So that is it. That was about the peripheral blood smear and how it is made and where do you find different cells.